But as we noted, stocks uh, here not far off record highs at this moment for the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, I think they're up six of seven days. Jenny Horn, host of Next Jest Investing, is with me. Tesla shares, we're watching those. And uh, lots of news that's been coming out pertaining to Tesla and even some good news with the sales in China, at least in part. Some of your thoughts on what you're watching. Yeah, so to speak on what you and Kevin were just discussing, we do know that President Trump and Elon Musk have the traded social media jobs, but we know Trump right now says he has no, it, it did say he has, has no interest in repairing the relationship with his former advisor, but did mention he has some degree of forgiveness. But Musk says he's expressing now regret over his criticisms of Trump, saying he went too far. And so Mr. Musk, of course, which has been, so much of, of what we've seen in the volatility play out in Tesla shares has also been pretty right now critical of particularly Donald Trump's the one big beautiful bill plan and everything in it on also what that looks like from an EV tax incentive perspective. But his public regret was another side of the potential thaw and the standoff with the president. Even last week, we know that Musk had agreed with a, a post on X suggesting the two men were stronger together. So Musk has since deleted some of the, the posts, but did seemingly have some interest in, in, in at least cleaning up that relationship. Because I agree with Kevin Hanks on de-escalate as soon as possible. The last thing you want is the richest man in the world and the president of one of the most important nations in the world going head to head. So now in regards to some fundamental news that actually matter to Tesla shares, although I, I can't say what actually impacts the, sh the price more because they seemingly both have a seat at the table, whether it's Musk's personality or robo taxis, they both influence the share price. But we do know that the date for the launch in Austin could shift because Musk posted on Tuesday on X saying that Tesla is being super paranoid about safety. Musk did also share a clip of the driverless black model Y SUV testing on public roads in Austin. But Tesla is hoping to at least derive much of its future from robotics and AI and has portrayed the launch of these driverless vehicles as central to Tesla's future success and valuation. Autonomy is, is something that Elon Musk mentions on every single one of these investor events or earnings calls. And he always, I, I like the comparison he once made of like, it'll be like getting in an elevator. The back in the day, you used to have an operator of your elevator, and then now it just became a seamless process. That's how he views of, of really his, his autonomy. So we do know that the RoboTaxi competes against Waymo, owned by Alphabet, which has launched the service back in 2020. It already operates in several cities, including like San Francisco and Austin. So Tesla right now it does need to make an entry into the space and quickly at that. Tentatively said for June 22nd, but I think that any time you bring up FSD, to me as an avid follower of Tesla at least, I do have some degree of skepticism around the timelines because we have been promised FSD for years. I know that the launch is expected at yeah, June 22nd, but we will have to wait and see what that actually looks like and what the rollout looks like because there's still a lot of question marks around that infamous now June 22nd date. Yeah, unbelievable. And what a run it's had in three months, up 41% and still mm -hmm. negative year to date, down mm -hmm. almost 20% year to date. But an incredible run. And tomorrow, the big robo taxi launch and that event. And mm -hmm. we'll uh, piece out the important information there. Then we turn our attention over to NVIDIA. And we know Jensen Wong has been uh, dropping around Europe, he, uh, UK, and some jobs and Paris. What are, what are we hearing? Yeah, he's been busy. So I, I think there's a lot of, of important news elements that have been, I mean, definitely influential for NVIDIA. And we do know that he's saying, Jensen Wong, CEO, of course, is saying that quantum computing is reaching an inflection point. Now, mind you, he was a, a huge critic of everything quantum just about six to nine months ago. And we saw these quantum stocks all take an absolute nosedive as a result. And then Social media blew up saying that this was basically like insider trading. Like, how was he allowed to give these comments that influence share prices so much without really having much base of knowledge to, to go on? But that being said, he is now saying that they, he expects they'll be solving these real world problems in the coming years, reaching this inflection point that was at the GTC Paris Developer Conference on Wednesday. So quantum computers are basically machines that use these quantum mechanics to solve problems far, far faster and more efficiently and basically foolproof compared to regular computers. 
So for that reason, this has been a buzzy space with several of these names like Getty Computing as well as IonQ seeing, I mean, some substantial volatility. So I do think with the AI build, it's been very impressive to watch these quantum stocks. But all things considered, he has been a critic of the space, now is trying to make good, it seems like. And also, there is still a ways away on a lot of these quantum stocks because, again, timelines are not definitive. So there's a bit of an uncertainty there regarding like NVIDIA's role in quantum right now, Nicole. It just, you know, you talk about quantum, we look at NVIDIA every day. I mean, obviously a huge holding for everybody. I'm even seeing NVIDIA and Novo Nordisk collaborate mm -hmm. to build AI models for early research and clinical use. I mean, we knew AI was going to be an important part of every part of life, and here mm -hmm. it is in the clinical use of life. So um, a final thought on a stock that's come up from $86 up to $143. Yeah, and I, I think just a quick thought on, on the Nova Nordisk deal. So announcing this collaboration with Nova Nordisk to accelerate the drug discovery efforts through innovative AI use cases. So the work does support right now their agreement that already exists with the DCAI to use these various sovereign AI supercomputers. I think this is so fascinating, especially because drug discovery as well as like the overall medical world, I think will be hugely impacted by AI. And we're still just at the tip of the iceberg here. All right, Jenny Horn, great to see you. Thank you so much.